finally here we are. So let's connect to the wallet. Now let's sign in with Ethereum. Here's our signature. And as we can see, a lot of information is loaded. So on the left, NFTs. On the right, ENS metadata. And higher above is our ENS domain. Hello everyone. In today's video, we'll go through signatures for Ethereum. So let's start with the theory. Why do we even want to use signatures? So main thing is that through signatures, we can hold users data and it's accessible via signing. So we do sign, we get the uh, information, the data. Another thing, which is important in my opinion, is that signing messages provide a way to authenticate a message to a smart contract. So simple as that, we can authenticate a message, right? Uh, another important thing is about digital signatures. And it means that on Ethereum, we have an access to the built-in ECDSA signature verification algorithm, and it lets you verify the integrity of the signed hash to data and recover the signed public key. So it's all about getting the public key, honestly. And the last thing I would like to mention in this video is about public key cryptography. And the main purpose is to prove knowledge of a secret without revealing that secret and to prove the authenticity of data. So let's leave it at that with the theory and go to the practice. Okay, so first we have to start with the uh, basic implementation of signing with Ethereum. To do that, uh, we went to uh, Docs and uh, here we have uh, the options and we are interested in Quick Start Guide, which leads us to the uh, main Quick Start uh, repository with a few options. So we want the most advanced option that uh, allows us to display NFTs and ENS information of a user that signs in with Ethereum. So uh, we have to uh, clone this repository and we already did that. And we also added some changes to it. And you will be able to find the repository on our GitHub. It's basically a clone with some uh, changes, which will let you uh, see all of the NFTs and, uh, uh, and uh, ENS information with a bit better interface and uh, also see the information from the testnet. So what we did here is we went to the JS file and we changed the chain ID for is the chain ID of the RinkyB testnet network, uh, which we'll use. Uh, this way we can uh, you know, display all of our NFTs, even if we don't have any on the Ethereum mainnet. We also added uh, a lot of uh, design changes to make it look, look a bit better, but uh, it's not uh, it's not the best. That's not the point. But uh, yeah, just make sure to go through the repository and see how the stuff works. Uh, for now, uh, you can already see that we have uh, two folders. It starts with backend and frontend. So of course, backend is uh, is uh, our API that uh, has all of those ex uh, exported endpoints like nouns, verify, which is the most important one, and personal information, which will return the information of the user after signing in. Okay, so I'll go ahead and explain the most important endpoint uh, in our backend. So it's verify. Uh, you can see that it has the same structure as all of the other endpoints. So we have the request and response. We validate the request. If it doesn't have uh, a message, then we throw an error. But if it does, we use it to create a sign in with Ethereum object, which we'll operate on. And uh, we'll validate the uh, signature uh, that uh, we sent in our request body. Uh, we check uh, whether the uh, nonce is valid. If it's not, then we throw the error. And we save all of the uh, session information to our signing Ethereum object in the session object. And we also sent the uh, cookie expiration date 
which is here and uh, then we just uh, save the session and uh, respond with uh, response uh, code 200 which says that everything's all right but if it's not and if it throws an error you can see that it's cached here and we clear all the sign with ethereum data and nonce from the session we console log the error so it's easier to debug and uh, depending on the case whether it's an expired message uh, invalid signature or our default error which we treat as a server error 500 we return the response with the according uh, status error error code so that's it in our verify endpoint um, so we can move to the front-end part so in the front-end part we have a few files so we have the CSS file which is the least important and it's only for the visuals which aren't that good anyways so uh, it will be very useful but uh, what's interesting is the HTML file where you have all of the buttons and those buttons are connected to the JS file uh, just like in the web development in general uh, where we uh, connect all of those buttons to our functions and we have a few important functions here and uh, uh, this thing is um, something important we should start with as you can see we declare the backend address so the backend address uh, in our case is localhost 3000 and also going back to the uh, backend index.js file you can see at the top I forgot to mention that we declare the frontend address so make sure that the uh, frontend address is right here by default it will be on the port 8080 otherwise the applications won't be working because it's a sort of a protection so that the backend only allows our uh, our application to to talk to the endpoints to call the endpoints so we have the first function uh, which uh, creates a sign with Ethereum message and uh, it basically is used to prepare the object sign with Ethereum message which is used down below we have the connect wallet so this tutorial is not really about connecting wallets we have a separate tutorial for that so link in the description uh, we have the uh, get ENS metadata because the application as you saw lets us see the information of the information from our ENS later on we will show you how to create your own ENS domain down below we have the sign in with ethereum function so it's a pretty important one which calls the verify endpoint and uh, using the uh, object we created above using the create a sign with ethereum message and uh, when everything is all right and the uh, response is uh, says oh it's okay uh, then we show the ens profile and all of the nfts which is the next part because the application lets us load all of our nfts from the selected chain id so it, in our case it will be ethereum rinkyb or ethereum mainnet and we have uh, some uh, other uh, functions like get information so it's personal information about the current user session which also displays the ens profile nfts and uh, what's next we have the ens profile because uh, it lets us to our to load our ens name and also our avatar because your domain can store an avatar later on about that we have the link to OpenSea so that we can load all of the nfts and the function to load all of the nfts which uses the uh, uh, support function here to create the url so it's this one if it's if you use uh, mainnet and you want to see your nfts on the mainnet you just get rid of this testnet thing and it will load the nfts from the mainnet and the last one here is the display nfts which is just uh, some html mambo jumbo that displays all of our nft information 
in a table object in HTML. So that's about it on our front end side. Uh, we have uh, webpack configuration and stuff, but it's not essential here. So I think that we can move to the uh, demonstration part and uh, show you how to run the application in general. So to run the application, uh, we have to run front end and 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 backend. To run front end, we use npm run dev, and you can go to the um, packet JSON here and see that we have the dev script, which runs webpack serve. But first, it's better to make sure that you have the um, port available. So let's kill two ports, the front-end one and the back-end one. If you don't do this, then the application will start using ports like 3001 and 8081 and it will just piss you off and, and uh, the application won't be working. So now we can run the uh, front-end application using npm run dev. And uh, we can create a new terminal to run the backend. So to run backend, we have to go to backend directory and uh, run node source slash index.js, which is our backend file. It will start after uh, several seconds. And then you will be able to go to uh, your browser and open localhost 8080. And here you can see our application. So we'll start with connecting our wallet, making sure that you are connecting on the specified chain ID. In our case, it's four, so link B. The wallet is connected. So now we can sign in with Ethereum. And here you have all the information about the signature. So we have information about the chain ID for, we have our nonce, uh, our date, and what site we are interacting with. And also our address we are using now. And here after a while, or uh, if you have any problems after clicking the get session information button, which can be used as a refresh tool too. You can see our uh, ENS name, domain name, our small avatar, our NFTs loaded from the OpenSea API. We load all of the information, so we could even display all of the images here. And our ENS domains. So I have only one ENS domain on this account, on the RinkyB network, which is this one. And uh, you can create your own to do all this. Uh, if you don't have any NFTs here, just make sure to create some on testnets.opensea on the RinkyB network, which is supported on uh, OpenSea, and then you'll be able to see all of them here. But uh, now the ENS part. So to create your own ENS uh, domain, you just go and uh, to the app ENS domain site and you can see that I already have uh, my domain here but to create a new one you go to the main page and look for any name so like example ENS with some numbers and then you see how much you have to pay for it it's on a test net so you can just proceed click a few buttons and uh, after a while, your domain will be created. So to not waste time, I'll, I used my existing domain. And if I go into the details, you can see that we have the text record section where we set all of the ENS domain information. We set the link to the avatar, which was displayed on the page. We have a lot of other informations. We could display all the information uh, on the uh, website if you want. So it's pretty handy for the user section session to uh, know the information about the user 
if he has his own ENS domain. So this is the result. And now we should be able to uh, implement signing with Ethereum solution and store user information if in his uh, session data, load uh, all of the NFTs and uh, look up the ENS information to have all of the Ethereum information about the user and just let him use the app as if he used a signing with Google, signing with Apple and other options. It's only a few clicks, so very useful and it's very hot in blockchain in general. Uh, we have the uh, repository on our uh, blog the chain GitHub. So thanks and see you next time.